Good morning. My name is Sandro De Luca. Welcome to Assumption Parish, a member of the Windsor Heritage Catholic Family of Parishes. Today is the 23rd Sunday in Ordinary Time. Father Stephen Hubert will preside at this morning's liturgy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My sisters and brothers, in our readings today, we hear Jesus talking to us about how to relate to those who have wronged us or who have sinned against us. And we're reminded that we are always to do that in a spirit of charity and love. So for those times that we have sinned against others by failing to love them as Christ has commanded us, let us turn to our Lord now and ask for his mercy and forgiveness. We ask pardon for all of our sins, remembering that God is a God of mercy and love. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Together we say, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, We adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, by whom we are redeemed and receive adoption. Look graciously on your beloved sons and daughters, that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom and an everlasting inheritance. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord, So you, son of man, I have made a watchman for the house of Israel. Whenever you hear a word from my mouth, 
you shall give them warning from me. If I say to the wicked, O wicked one, you shall surely die, and you do not speak to warn the wicked to turn from their ways, the wicked person shall die in their iniquity, but their blood I will require at your hand. But if you warn the wicked person to turn from their ways, and they do not turn from their ways, they shall die in their iniquity, but you will have saved your life. The word of the Lord. The responsorial Psalm. Oh, that today you would listen to the voice of the Lord. Do not burden, do not harden your hearts. Oh, that today you would listen to the voice of the Lord. Do not harden your hearts. Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. Oh, that today you would listen to the voice of the Lord. Do not harden your hearts. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would listen to the voice of the Lord. Do not harden your hearts. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice as on the day at Massa in the wilderness. Do not harden your hearts as at Meribah, as on that day at Massa in the wilderness, when your ancestors tested me and put me to the proof, though they had seen my work. Oh, that today you would listen to the voice of the Lord. Do not harden your hearts. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, owe no one anything except to love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word, love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus spoke to his disciples. If your brother or sister sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If he or she listens to you, you have regained your brother or sister. But if the person does not listen, take one or two others along with you so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the person refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if that person refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly, I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly, I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. The Gospel of the Lord.
When we first take a look at our readings today, they can seem to be pretty straightforward because it seems like Ezekiel is telling us that we have a responsibility to speak to the wicked and to tell them that they are wrong in their ways of living. And Jesus seems to very much be telling us the same thing because he tells us and gives us this whole program of if a brother or sister sins against you, here's what you do. Here's how you work to remedy the situation. But these two readings do not fully make sense without the words of St. Paul that we hear in the second reading. St. Paul tells us at the end of this passage that love does no wrong to a neighbor and that it is love that is the fulfilling of the law. We live in a world today where so often our tendency is to jump right in to attacking those whom we don't agree with, right into attacking those who have wronged us. And we see it in our news media. We see it in the way that people behave on social media and Facebook and so on. And the tendency isn't even to try to go confront the person first. It's to just go right into, I can't believe what that person did to me. I can't believe that they have behaved this way and acted this way. And we try to get all kinds of people riled up and joining in with us in condemning that person. And even when the person promises that they're gonna try and change, that they're gonna try and better their life, we still get other people to say, yeah, but remember when they did this to me and remember when they did that to me? It's this whole thing in our world that has been dubbed cancel culture. And it does not allow a person the possibility to change or to be converted. And it is completely contrary to the gospel that we read and proclaim, which asks us, yes, to go and confront people and speak to them about their wrongs, but to do it in that spirit of charity and love where we go first to them privately Then we come with a couple of other witnesses. Then Jesus says, go to the church. But what even does that mean to go to the church? And what does it mean when he says to treat them as a Gentile or a tax collector? Even there, it doesn't mean that we just, it's not saying, oh, completely cut the person off because it was still in the Jewish commandments that Jesus would have lived by that you were to have respect and concern for the foreigner and the Gentile that lived in your land. So in all of this, when we speak with others about sinfulness or about ways that they have harmed us and wronged us, we are called to do it with that spirit of love. And yes, that is very difficult in a world when some people quite honestly don't have regard for the other person and they don't care one way or the other if they've harmed a person because we're so self-focused and so self-referential that we forget about the responsibility that we have to show care and concern for others. But that's what we're challenged to do in our dealings with others, even if they have wronged us, we are still reminded that every single person we come into contact with is a child of God and that every single person has dignity precisely because they are a child of God. And when we remember that, and even in the difficult moments, we can begin to approach those who have wronged us in that spirit of love, in that spirit not of condemnation, but of being able to confront in a nonviolent way, we can begin to bring about healing in the world and begin to undo some of the divisiveness and some of the discord that is running rampant in our world today. 
We're called to move from that spirit of always wanting to attack others, always wanting to say, well, you did this to me and you did that and you did the other thing, to a place where we can go to that person and say, you know, when you said this, this is how it made me feel. And that opens a path of dialogue because it enables the other person to respond and say, well, I'm sorry, but that wasn't my intention. And then you can have an honest conversation about what was said, and you can honestly work together to resolve the situation. It's called nonviolent confrontation. And it is a skill that takes some time to master and practice, but it's a skill that if we are willing to learn and work at it, we can begin to bring about some change and heal some of the divisiveness and some of the discord that is in our world today. May we always be people who are willing to work for reconciliation, and in all that we do, may we be willing to build others up instead of seeking to tear them down. And so, brothers and sisters, let us stand and profess the faith that unites us all. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Out of love and compassion for a broken world, let us pray to the Lord. For the Church of the Diocese of London to be revitalized as more families of parishes begin serving the mission of God, united in a new way, especially our Windsor Heritage Catholic family of parishes. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for prosperous nations to share from their abundance with those countries battling the pandemic in poverty, violence, and injustice. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a safe, meaningful, and joyful return to school for all children and those serving in the education sector. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the earth, that during this month of celebrating the season of creation, we become more mindful of our call to good stewardship and take action accordingly. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace, justice, and healing in regard to racial, social, and political tensions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those throughout the world suffering from weather or accidental disasters, as well as the pandemic, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the eternal happiness of those who have died, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray also for Leslie and Jemmy Sabaza, who were married here yesterday, that as they begin their married life in Christ, they may find the blessings of God's love. We pray to the Lord. 
Generous God, your mercy and grace are given to us in abundance. Help us to love as you love, seeking reconciliation and healing with and among our neighbors, that we might glorify your name and proclaim your truth with all our lives. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who give us the gift of true prayer and of peace, graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty, and by partaking of the sacred mystery, we may be faithfully united in mind and heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth, he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering, canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, 
Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Ronald Peter, our Bishop, Joseph, his auxiliary, and all the clergy and ministers of your church. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, 
and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant that your faithful, O Lord, whom you nourish and endow with life through the food of your word and heavenly sacrament, may so benefit from your beloved Son's great gifts that we may merit an eternal share in his life, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Just a couple of brief announcements. First, as you heard at the beginning of Mass, our family of parishes, the Windsor Heritage Catholic Family of Parishes, is now officially activated. And if you go on our website or on our Facebook page, there's a lot of information about our new logo, what you might have seen when you walked in, some other information about the family, and so on. And we will continue to share more in the coming days and weeks. So we encourage you to check that out. Also, last weekend we took up a special collection for, to aid in the disaster recovery efforts in Lebanon. If you still wanted to contribute to that but were unable to do so last weekend, we will be glad to accept those donations. Just make sure that you let the ushers know it's for Lebanon on your way out. And then next weekend, there will be another special collection for the St. Peter's Seminary Fund. So just to be aware of that as well. And lastly, tomorrow being Labor Day, there will be no Mass in Rosary Chapel tomorrow. There is a Mass at St. Angela Marici Church over on Erie Street at 7 p.m., but there will be no Mass in Rosary Chapel, and there will be no live-streamed Mass tomorrow for Labor Day. We'll resume our regular schedule on Tuesday. And I hope that everyone has a blessed Labor Day holiday. Enjoy your time with family and friends, wherever your journeys may take you, even in this time of pandemic. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.